The BMW iX in my standardized German review, BMW's big EV SUV, range test in wintertime, recharging, fast charging test, and of course, an Autobahn special here in Germany. Let's go. A massive stance here in the front with that BMW double kidney. Is it still a double kidney? It might be even a mono kidney, isn't it? And with this closed look and also this anti-scratch surface so it can heal itself when it's really hot outside or when you use a hairdryer. I've tested that out and it really works. It's kind of magic indeed. These are here, by the way, these are plastic 3D number plates and they're even supposed to be more sustainable because they're lighter and also they take less materials, less resources to produce actually. The headlamp unit with nice daytime running light, LED is centered and option you can also get laser lights with extended high beam function. Then you also have these blue accentuation on the inside and what's also pretty cool is this you know the cleaning effect for the front and the rear view camera so in the front a very spectacular effect and also in the rear that looks really fancy isn't it you might wonder does this thing in the front open no it doesn't no frank with a length of 4 meters 95 or 195 inches, it has the length of the X5, is as flat as the X6 and has big wheels just like the X7 indeed. In this case, here the optional 22 inch wheels. And we have a minimal wide car with black frames and around the window sport pack and also the iX the stamping it with it's separating the roof and the rest of the body. The normal version, the entry version, which you can get with a smaller battery, also starts with an adaptive suspension without air suspension, actually. But here, this is kind of also the entry level in the US, the X550. That one automatically comes with air suspension, also the rear axle steering and also the bigger battery, 105 kilowatt hours net. I'm not really okay with the front double or mono kidney design. However, the rear, I think the design is really cool. Your slim tail lamps, great integration. I just love it. So although it's a big car, it doesn't look that bulky in the rear, I think. But it does split opinion. What's your take? Mineral white is this one, but we already had a phytonic blue vehicle. And there's also a Sophisto gray vehicle we had in our test. And the sports performance version, the M60, we have here in Storm Bay Metallic. That's also a very fancy color. Mm, the sporty difference of that M version, however, is somewhat limited. So a realistic winter consumption, motorway driving, steady speed, so actually in a rather efficient way, but around freezing temperatures here, 29 kilowatt hours on 100 kilometers, that would be rather less than 400 kilometers or less than 250 miles of winter range. However, what you can always do very well with BMWs here, since factory consumption, so the whole 3,800 kilometers this vehicle has been running so far, and there we have this average, 26 kilowatt hours on one kilometers, that's around 40 kilowatt hours on 100 miles, and that would be exactly 400 kilometers and 250 miles. Well, most of the time, you know, you know, it was rather cold when this vehicle was running, better consumption figures in summertime. Only in ideal summer conditions you can score some 20 kilowatt hours on 100 kilometers or then some 32 kilowatt hours on 100 miles at nice summer temperatures and steady speed. Then this vehicle also does some 550 kilometers or 350 miles of range. What's really interesting is we will do a test now, a comparison test in charging. We'll start with a rather cold battery, just a little driving around and then afterwards speed it up on the motorway and then do it again and see what's the difference 10 to 80 percent. This will be very interesting. So I had quite some effort to put this car exactly to 10 percent state of charge. Now here at the fast charger this is kind of like you know unlimited speed almost. This can do like uh, I think 350 kilowatt or something. Uh, so the car is the limit, 200 kilowatt max peak. Let's see what we can score. And we are starting at around 100 kilowatt. I did do search for vehicle charging stations and edit it into the results so the car knows I'm fast charging. 
BMW says also the car does need that to precondition the battery. However, I did get no confirmation from the car that it's being done so. I don't really know if the battery was preconditioned or not. That is always something that is lacking actually. And what I also found is that at first search, just AC stations were being shown, although both were in the list. So I then filtered it here basically to DC only and then actually my desired station was appearing. And you can see obviously the precondition either didn't work or it maybe wasn't long enough or something. We remain at about 100 kilowatt, which is not bad actually, but of course the car is capable of more. So meanwhile we picked up speed at around 140 kilowatt. So we have now 10 to 30% in about 15 minutes. Couldn't hold that peak for too long. Now we are already dropping down again. Hmm. We have something more than 80 kilowatt hours or then now 80% state of charge in almost 52 minutes. And now one more time, the battery is now properly preheated. I really boosted it on the motorway. It has to be really hot now. Let's see which difference we can score. And you can see the charging power immediately hops way higher. 164 kilowatt already. There we go, already reaching the peak. So yeah, we can already see right now this will be a massive difference. So there was a slight error in the charging process now. I had to restart it actually. Here also when you restart the process, immediately is already at the high peak. There we go, a nice 170 kilowatt the peak charging. Here's about 60% state of charge. Power drops slightly to about 120 kilowatt. Closing to 80%, here with 80 kilowatt still. Here we go, although we had this charging error in between, just over 30 minutes from 10 to 80% state of charge. And you know, if you combine this one here with the amount we charged before, so around 80 kilowatt hours net into the battery right there, back in these just over 30 minutes. Comparable result to the Mercedes EQS actually and so actually quite competitive. Again, it needs to be preheated. You need to speed it up on the motorway that the battery is actually warm enough or just drive for a long enough time. And indeed, 20 minutes difference is actually when it's cold or at the proper temperature, 20 minutes different, either 30 minutes or 50 minutes charging. Cockpit overview, super clean. Visually, that is really lovely, isn't it? The steering wheel has a very, let's say, hmm, interesting form. It looks futuristic, but is it really better to grip and handle? No. Uh, really? So I was talking about the steering wheel and the voice assistant just got activated and is now suggesting me this? Oh. Have you seen that? Is, that's, is that real? Uh, Should I connect you to the concierge services? No. All right. And you also have this effect here, where basically two screens dissolve into one visually. Of course, they are two separate ones, but looks definitely cool. At the steering wheel, you have here the volume control. And um, it does give you some feedback. However, it's this kind of you know, glossy area. This is for the voice input here. And this is for settings then, both for head-up display and the instruments. Left side for the cruise control is a mix of a hard button and some capacitive things. Well, are they capacitive? Yeah, I mean, more or less, I would say it's kind of like a mix. And as a comparison, this is the interior then at daytime and at darkness or nighttime. Of course, more ambient lighting features come alive then. These are the animal skin seats that, of course, doesn't fit to a modern EV, but they have plenty of sensor tech choice in different colors. We already saw the bright, the beige one was really beautiful. Then there's also a fabric wool mix available as alternative, but I would probably stick with the bright sensor tech seats. Seating position here in the front, upright, comfortable, and you also have these um, comfort function that the steering wheel, for example, lifts down and towards you then. Um, when you start up the vehicle, you have this electric control here. Interesting form for sure. Headroom with 1 minute 86 or 6 with 1, no problem right here. And of course that panoramic roof. So overall quite cool and comfortable here in the front. The seat control at the inside of the door looks fancy and it also still moves, unlike at Mercedes. 
Here again this crystalline scheme, but also here I would recommend to stick with the base scheme because it does not reflect light. Here once again it can blind you while driving depending on where the sun is coming in. Lower middle console here with adaptive cup holders, then two USB-C chargers and the inductive charging pad for your phone is interesting because it also indeed has these holes where the air is being sucked away so that the phone doesn't overheat like we know from 5 series or X5 or so. Then here in this upper user interface, middle console area, I have my basement garage beeper in here, but you could also fit a smartphone there. Then you have this turning pressing knob. It has good feedback and da, 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 da. <laughs> Thomas DJ. So some hotkeys, matte wood background. This crystalline look, by the way, is optional. So you can also get the more basic one and I would recommend the base one because this one here does give you some reflections when there's sunlight coming in. And then the drive selector, you can also go to the B mode then by putting it you know, one more time behind. This is then still a volume jog, it just flickers on camera, by the way. And here is the My Mode selection for the driving modes. Which is to me too complicated because then you have to press it in the lower console and then you have to select the mode. So always two steps and then it stays like this. So if you want to go back to the GPS, for example, you have to press the back button in the middle console and go back to the CarPlay or I have to hit the nav button again. Why? Recuperation here, by the way, you can see here it always goes down then here when you drive to this adaptive mode in a normal D mode. I can also put it to the B mode. This is then more or less one pedal driving. The D mode, however, is also very interesting because that one is kind of like an adaptive mode for recuperation. So the car is rolling when there's no one in front of you and it is harder recuperating doing this regenerative braking when there's a car in front of you. And that could be a good solution between the old discussion, is one pedal driving better or is rolling and then regenerative braking on demand better? This year, this compromise in between is to me at this moment the best solution. Screen, by the way, only flickers on camera. And here, let's listen to this 4D sound system, Bowers and Wilkins. And you do get a very interesting sound. And this also has vibrations in the seats, for example, um, at the bass moments. But then again, I think that the sound is great, but not worth another four or five thousand euros extra in comparison to the Harman Kardon sound system. So there's bass, Harman Kardon, and then Bowers and Wilkins. So I would stick with the Harman Kardon sound system because I think it's also, you know, they have a long term BMW partnership and I somehow think that the sound itself fits more to the brand. Well, in operating system eight, I have to say I found the OS 7 better here, the new one. Look at that, how many apps you have here. Then you can filter it, by the way, for example, here just for vehicle apps. But there are so many things that are more complicated than before. The climate control, for example. I used to ha have a button at the steering wheel for the heated steering wheel. Now I have to go into the climate menu and then do it here like this. Would there be an alternative with the voice assistant? Maybe, let's see. Heated steering wheel. Sure, I will activate the steering wheel heating. Okay, so that is the alternative. So make things more complicated and then maybe voice recognition is a solution. However, here you cannot turn off the AC function. So like the you know, um, uh, dehumidization. So sometimes I like to drive without AC function on, but just have the uh, ventilation on not possible here anymore, actually. And what's also uh, very important is um, you can turn off these, you know, these driving sounds, for example, and the thing is always like, where do you have to search for that? Now, like, when it's like, oh, I want to have the BMW Iconic sounds off. <sighs> so where would I do that? Live vehicle, maybe? No, these are like the recent city consumption. And then it's always like, okay, what, what am I doing now? Okay, is it maybe vehicle apps? Is it system settings? Is it, what, what is it actually? Driving settings? That might be, right? Uh, here's iconic sounds. But, ah, there we go. And then iconic sounds off. Okay. However, this startup sound then by Hans Zimmer as well, this, um, this thing here. And back again. 
This cannot be deactivated. Hmm. Yeah, and you can see here the climate unit went into the screen for such a solution. It's actually quite okay because it always stays there. Still no really buttons. One good thing of the OS8, however, here it does not only support Apple CarPlay but also Android Auto. There is one big advantage to OS8, however, here when you have the Apple Maps from Apple CarPlay running, then it can also be projected right into the instrument cluster. Not possible with Google Maps though, sadly. Just with Apple Maps. Well, and this is how Apple CarPlay also can look like. Speaking of BMW OS 8. The glove box, by the way, opens here. It's not really intuitive and really small. And then we have the middle armrest area here, split opening and some more space. Here the electrochromatic shade in that panoramic roof. That is very spectacular, isn't it? Something of the ambient lighting you can already see from the interior, for example, here then at the doors. Oh, and the voice assistant is trying to tell me something. So the voice assistant, not sure if here it is still trying to tell me something while I'm filming. And here, uh, you can see at the rear, has the voice assistant is telling us something all the time. I'm not sure what is, what is going on there. <laughs> okay, then here, um, you can see no middle tunnel in the rear, that's of course cool and leaves you a lot of space then. You sit indeed quite comfortably in the rear, enough legroom is left even when there's a tall driver and headroom wise with 1m86 or 6 one also no problem and a good view then through the panoramic roof. Um, the bench is kind of short so for tall people it could be a little bit longer, also quite plush but overall the offering of space is really cool and also in the middle part since there's no middle tunnel EV platform you can easily then overall house five tall adults. Well and here in the rear area we find a bit of old school classic BMW because here that rear climate unit that is still something to touch for real. Yeah that's kind of like a luxury now for the rear passengers isn't it? And you can also get two USB-C chargers for the rear and this is then like a, like a mount for rear seat entertainment. That trunk area houses 500 up to 1750 liters and I prepared something for you here with the cabin trolley and this is a meter of 40 inches in length and in width good dimensions and the total height here is about 75 centimeters or 29 inches below the cover 45 centimeters or 18 inches and here you have a space for your charging cable for example so that's coming quite handy actually and here also with a click mechanism, good build quality actually. And then we can also fold the seats. I am doing it on the right side here and I can do it simultaneously. Look at that. So that is folding really, really nicely all the way flat. And even the voice assistant is being activated from the rear here. I cannot believe it. And this is almost two meters. So it's like one meters 90 or 75 inches. And I have to speak a little bit louder so you don't hear the voice assistant. I didn't quite understand you. <laughs> oh my god. Hey, what's up? Thomas is driving lounge with the BMW iX X-Drive 50. So two electric motors, one in the front, one in the rear. We go to the My Modes drive selection. Select Sports Mode. The screen actually stays where it is actually. So um, four and a half seconds is the official acceleration figure and we'll do a rolling start from 40 kilometers an hour. See how that thing rockets us forward and let's go. Other. 150. And 200 almost. Because that's one in the front it won't make way but this was pretty quick, right? Really spontaneous acceleration and some sound noises here from the BMW Iconic Sounds, as it's called. And when I'm talking about BMW Iconic Sounds, the voice assistant gets activated. Sorry, I didn't quite hear that. <laughs> I have the experience that the voice assistant is constantly activated. I'm not sure if they think that people don't talk in the car. Um, yeah, very interesting. Your lane change at higher speeds, super stable and it's also extremely silent in here. So that is very notable. Really, really cool. 
By the way, I've tested before about the high-speed consumption and that's usually around double the energy consumption than you normally have as an average. That means with this vehicle you can go somewhat a little bit less than 200 kilometers or less than 125 miles at, full, at around 200 kilometers or 125 miles. That's pretty interesting, right? Um, about the normal consumption figures, a little bit more than um, we've, we've already seen earlier on. Um, yeah, I can just stress again, the winter is paying its toll, although this does have a heat pump. That's the thing. Now we're getting into tunnel and you see the driving mode sele selection stays where it is. So once again here while driving, it's so complicated, my modes, um, then activate the driving mode, then it stays there. And if I'm having the GPS running, then I have to deactivate it, that screen or go back somewhere like this or hit nav or something. I don't get it. I mean, has no BMW test driver ever driven this vehicle before releasing it on the market and switched to a driving mode and realized, what is this, you know? I don't get it. But here, ambient lighting is pretty cool at the windows. This is really fancy and this vehicle delivers such a smooth and flawless ride. I mean, really spontaneous acceleration. It's one of the most silent cars overall we've been driving and you have to say, here at high speeds, um, no, the car will get dirty, just put it to the car wash. Damn it. <laughs> yeah, here the road is still wet. So this car is so silent and at high speeds we don't have any engine noise covering something up, you know. Being an EV, well maybe with these iconic sounds, but that's basically it. But there you still you feel how silent this car is really you know laid out to be. Extremely awesome and good steering feeling, really nice. Air suspension is doing a good job. A little bit stiffer in the sport mode, so we have a little bit more feedback. Normal mode then, it is actually a little bit more forgiving and softer. So what a great setup by suspension, steering, noise insulation, performance, and the overall feeling for the vehicle. The seats could deliver a little bit more side support, I would say. Um, so you tend to fly around in them, especially on the animal skin equipment, a, a lot actually, when you are in some faster corners. Essential to the driving is also the rear axle steering. Mm, we will experience more of that later on, but already here you can kind of feel, also when I'm coming to that 90 degree, degree berm then, it feels a little bit artificial as rear axle steering do, but you feel that the rear is basically coming around a little bit and also when you're going like in slalom like, like here, at lower speeds it steers the rear wheels in the opposite direction than the front wheels and this massively reduces the turning circle. I had one situation in the city earlier where with some vehicles I cannot do a U-turn in one step and this is a massive vehicle size-wise. And here U-turning is no problem at all because of that rear axle steering. Dual electric motor, air suspension and rear axle steering is, that means it's like the in, uh, integral active steering they call it. It is actually standard here for, the, um, for this model, otherwise optional for the lower battery entry model. So here you basically get the full package. Yeah, also when you accelerate out of the corners, Really nice and smooth rear. Ah, that's beautiful, beautiful rear axle bias. Still, I can just stress again: it's a big, heavy EV, but it feels so light and agile. Also, really worth to tune in to my Alpine, um, you know, spiraling <laughs> roads or winding roads special I had at the other review. That was also a lot of fun to watch, to, to tune into that if you're interested at a later stage, of course. Here, heading one more time to the tunnel, I can tell you more about assistance systems. You activate them here, left side of the steering wheel, and then you can set either normal distance control, that's possible, a speed limiter, or the assisted driving mode. And in the assisted driving mode, then we also have the active lane keeping assist. And you can see here, 
I'm supposed to keep my hands on the steering wheel. It's level two autonomous driving or automated driving. And here we have a slight left turn inside the tunnel and there is hardly any visible steering movement from the vehicle. So it really keeps me in the lane in a very smooth and non-obstructive way. That is lovely done. My mode selection, once again, sport mode when we are already at speed. Is there something left in the EV tank for that? 90 kilometers an hour. Go. Two kilometers an hour now and it is on everyone. Wow. Really awesome. Wow, how well this car is behaving here at higher speeds. And still, it's relatively silent considering this is like notable speed. I mean, yeah, welcome to Germany. It's like German Autobahn and like everything on like, oh, you know, okay, what else? <laughs> and that's also enough speed for the day. Just letting the car roll now. Massive rolling power now, of course. And on the brakes, sometimes there can be problems with EVs that the brake blending, so it's called, is not that good. So the transition between where the recuperation ends, or is at highest stage, and the real brake brakes are being, being applied. And here so far, a very smooth and controlled feeling indeed. So can't complain about that at all. It really feels very natural. So all the hardware effects they've put you in the, into this vehicle, you really feel that all that experience from decades you know, of BMW vehicle building went into this vehicle, although it's basically an all new one and they don't have so, so much experience with, this, uh, with these EVs. Pardon? Not pardon, I'm not talking to you, man. Or well, in this case, woman. Sorry, lady. Please try it. The hell? Which of these areas would you like to learn more about? None. I'm just talking to the guys at the screen, you know, sitting at home or whatever, or being on the way. You're not part of this, are you? Well, we, we can ask her something, right? Uh, what do you think about Mercedes? I'll leave that up to you. As a digital assistant, I can afford not to have my own opinion on everything. She can't afford to have her own opinion on everything. Well, this uh, is a very diplomatic answer. And I, we know these answers also from Mercedes. I would have wished they would have been a little bit more daring, you know, and saying like, yeah, you know, screw them, or <laughs> something like this. That would have been fun, right? Okay, back to countryside driving here. Once again, I love that smooth driving feeling. People have asked me, Thomas, what about BMW iX3 versus iX? The iX3, based on that X3, is more or less a normal vehicle to drive, just with the electric drivetrain, also quite good efficiency figures. And then the all new iX with that separate, you know, platform, you can put bigger battery in it and so on and so on and efficiency, blah, 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 blah. And what did I do now? Yeah, and that, uh, that uh, drives me to the point. This is an awesome vehicle and it's actually one of the best EVs out there with, you know, in many different aspects. Not maybe the winter range or winter efficiency, but everything else, it's really awesome. But what I do appreciate with the iX3 is that it's a normal car, you know. This vehicle here has a lot of things we already realized while driving, which, which scream out like, hey, let's change things because we want to change things and not because it's better. The steering wheel looks awesome and futuristic. Is it better to handle? No. But the climate unit went into the touchscreen. Looks cleaner. Is it better to control? No. The BMW OS8 looks fancier. Yes, you can use Apple Maps in the instruments. You have more functionalities. 
Is it easier to use? No. And you can add this and this and this and this and this, and then... Try one more time. The hell? What? Did I even mention BMW? I did, 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 did in some Which way... Which one of the destinations shall I select? Which one should I select? Now I'm driving to Belgium? Why? <laughs> did I at some point mention Hello BMW in my speech? Did I? I mean... Wait. And this is exactly the reason I, I really love this vehicle. I love the drive. It's awesome. No doubt. But for this exact reason and the reason I just mentioned, I would actually take a step back, save the money, get the iX3. Big problem is that the Harman Kardon sound system and I think there was the panoramic roof as well, you can only get in high trim and then it's connected with animal skin seats. The hell? So I take an iX3 with Sensatec seats. Steering wheel is also not animal free, neither in the iX here nor in the iX3, also a favorite BMW, but I would still take the iX3 for being more simple. In the iX3, I can get in the vehicle, I know exactly what I'm doing, where is what, it never fails any user interface command I'm giving, no matter how I do that. The voice control is already working, the infotainment has a good overview, it's almost a perfect EV, besides, you know, the some animal skin and trim uh, combination issues, especially for our friends in the UK. The iX3 is awesome. This one is also, also awesome, but the user interface is really getting on my nerves. They have made it more complicated than necessary. That's the problem, and I'm not willing to pay double the price for a car that is harder to be controlled. That's the thing. So if you ask yourself, iX3 versus iX, save the money, get the iX3, you'll be happy. Other than that, if you compare this one here, for example, to a Mercedes EQS, this one it is, because this one is still easier to handle than the Mercedes Please EQS. Please try once again, in surroundings that are as quiet as possible. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Talking about the EQS versus the BMW iX. <laughs> Um, so I would still take the iX because the ride is just more awesome. Mm, it is still easier to handle. Um, especially in the US, you have more options for animal-free seating, for example, than with the EQS. And overall, I feel it's a more fun and more desirable vehicle. And it will be compared, of course, to the EQS SUV, which you will also see here on Autogruppe very soon. So subscribe if you haven't done it so far. Uh, yeah, but overall, I mean, just, just the feeling, you know, um, and the comfort, the EQS is not good in driving comfort. Um, it's even worse in winter efficiency. So um, the EQS to me, a little bit of a hit and miss at this moment. Um, I don't know, maybe they had to rush things or something. Um, probably then, the, you know, the improved one will maybe be better than at this stage. And here also the more, I think, better usable vehicle overall. So um, yes. Still, I love it, I love to drive it. It's a spectacular vehicle, no doubt, with the shortcomings I've just mentioned. And the voice assistant is running. I mean, I'm almost, can you cancel the voice assistant? Oh, speed camera here. I... Sorry, I didn't, please retry uh, or say. Hmm, I hope I was slow enough. Man, because they put like like a 20 kilometer uh, speed limit here. Well, it didn't flash, did it? Did you see guy? Did you see any flashing here? I didn't, you know. So yeah, gotta pay attention to that and call call all my friends living in the area here. <laughs> warning, warning! There's a speed camera coming. Um, yeah, back to the vehicle. Once again, here in the corners with the rear axle steering feels really amazing. Rear axle steering is one of the advantages, of course. Also, if you compare some of the competitor models. So, still enjoying the ride very, very much, but it is something we can talk about for hours and hours and hours. Indeed, this is also what makes this car so special. I mean, when you look at this review and also our earlier review, 
so many things we can say about this vehicle, so many things to discuss. That's what I really appreciate. It is the farthest you can imagine from being a boring vehicle, and from being standard. And I think this is also something that BMW intended to do, you know. The same they intended with the new double kidney they introduced with the 4 Series. Talked to this designer at that stage and he said like, okay, my task was that people talk about BMW design again. And the same thing they also achieved by putting the BMW iX on the road. People are massively talking about BMW again. That's what this vehicle is also for. If you want to compare this one here directly to the iX3, we have a review of that one. And of course also to the Mercedes EQS. Tune in here.